Hey, this is Jeremy and Zan, and you're watching the Lotus Boxers. What's happening, YouTube? Lotus Boxers here. You got Jeremy Bertarioni. And Zan Sith. And it is good to be back, as always. Zan, what am I looking at here? These aren't... This is Phoenix, but... That is white. White Phoenix. Actually, wait. That doesn't sound great. Yeah, that's kind of... All right, we'll just, we'll just call it Phoenix with white. Yes. Phoenix <laughs> with white. So, so, what's the white for? So the white's for Path to Exile, Detention Sphere, and some really dope sniper. Okay, so Path to Exile. Um, let's just talk about the background of this deck. You played it lately in an IQ. I did. Uh, Zam, why don't you just tell us how your last weekend went? I think everybody wants to hear this because it's cool. Yeah, my IQ went, uh, well, my weekend went pretty well. So I played in two IQs, played two separate decks. In one of, in the first one I played this deck. Uh, and then the next one, I played your deck, Shadow Deck. <laughs> uh, so in the first one, I lost in top four. So did he. I also made top four of the event. We made top four together. We drove three and a half hours to an IQ, which is way past my limit. But, um, you know, it would have felt really bad to scrub. Yep. Fortunately, we both made top four. We're able to split in the top four. So we had an awesome trip. Yep. Uh, it's just Lotus Boxers through the tournament. Yep. That Unfortunately, I lost the Tron. And you I, lost to... I lost to Phoenix. Yep. But I would have won the match if I had drawn my third land ever in the last game. Yeah. Really? It's okay. I'm not mad, but that is how close it was. So I don't want people to think that I just got steamrolled. Yeah. I didn't get steamrolled either. There were some bad beat stories there, which I'm not going to discuss. No, we don't have to talk about it. But yeah. it, it, they were close, and that's important, right? Because exactly. we don't have a steamroll matchup, really. Of course. Um, so the white, how good was it? We, we don't even have to say how good we think it is. We've played it a little bit before. How good was the white? The white is ridiculous. Okay. It's just ridiculous. It makes uh, matchups that are okay into fantastic, and it is important for the man. I think the white puts you on edge, uh, puts you favored for the man. And I, and I do think that a matchup that's very difficult for this deck, which is Shadow, is now a good matchup. Okay. So it makes Shadow a lot better when Shadow was... People have been saying about even. I think it really is around about even. I think that if one is more tuned, it'll usually win. But like also, there's a lot of interplay there. Well, it's even based on the fact that Phoenix is such a consistent deck. Yeah. Right? It's not even if both decks are drawing at the same level. And so when, when both decks are drawing at the same level, now I just believe that Phoenix is just better now. Because of this white. Because of the white. Because basically, there were spots... Okay, now we have to get into the spot where I played this deck this uh, on Sunday. Uh, I played Shadow on Sunday, and um, uh, Michael Braverman, one of our friends, who lent me the deck for Saturday, played this deck on Sunday. Sunday, yeah. And I ended up playing against him, and uh, basically that match... I ended up winning with Shadow, but it took a lot. He, you had to get a little lucky. Yeah. He had to get a little unlucky. But um, we both made top four. I ended up winning the tournament because he scooped me in top four. So we don't know what would have happened in top four. So let's just be honest with our viewers. Our viewers have seen a history of us playing a deck on our videos, taking them to events, and doing really well with them. Yep. That's just something that you guys have come to expect. We like to be honest with you. Is this the next level up of Phoenix, or is this just like if you want to do? No, I think that this is the next level. And, and and by now, you guys have seen our videos enough. This is the next level of Phoenix. That's what you should be playing. If you're not playing this version, you're going to be behind. And pro we're probably about two or three weeks ahead, right? If this is the next version. Yep. All right, so that's perfect. Tell me a little bit about the white sideboard cards. And then I think it's imperative that we hop into the game. Yep. Uh, I think that the white sideboard cards are really, really powerful. Top red is the best card against um, the red deck in terms of one card power level against burn circle of protection red if you've only been playing against uh since cons of tarkir is the card that you can name to make somebody in your local game store completely smile ear to ear was there anybody that you told this weekend that you were looking for a cop red that wasn't just like i love that so yeah. much <laughs> yeah they were losing their their minds there but... was there was the biggest smile on their face every time you said circle of protection red exactly but the other thing you have to think about this card is it's pretty solid against other Phoenix decks. The only thing that it doesn't stop is... That the, thing. Game in the Ice. Which, now you have many answers, even if it's flipped. Ooh. So, moving on to other powerful white cards, we got Stony Silence. Stony! We all know how great Stony is, and this deck in particular really 
wants to just buy some some time and with that time it just does damage so quickly and I think Stony is one of those cards that yeah even if they have the answer in their deck by the time they find it you gotta flip thing in the ice and a phoenix attacking for 10 mm -hmm. and then Alpine Moon I think that now that you're splashing the white you can't afford to play Blood Moon and I always thought that Blood Moon was kind of slow let's say you lo lose the, the, the die roll um, you're just like you know praying that they don't have turn 3 charm because they're always gonna have it Alpine Moon is one of those cards that lets you do what you're doing or want to do. Uh, lets you deal with what they're trying to do while you're able to do what you want to do. You know, like you can continue to cast all those cantrips because this card is Ghostbuster. And then the last card is staring at me. I'm looking at it right now. My girlfriend for a year and a half, Nahiri the, <laughs> Nahiri the Harbinger, <laughs> let's just talk about it. What's going on, Zan? Have you lost your mind? Okay, so Nahiri is a card. So basically, if you've been playing Phoenix at all, there's been a debate. Is it Jace the Mind Sculptor? Is it Chandra? Torture Plan. Torture Plan. Uh, but it's Nahiri. It's just clear. Look at it. It draws a card, discards a card. That's what you want to do with this deck. That's a Faithless Looting half. And it goes up to six loyalty. Six loyalty is not to be messed with. The beef. The minus ability deals with everything you ever wanted. It destroys Pyromancer's Ascension. It kills tapped Thing in the Ices, tapped Phoenixes. It's exiling that stuff. And the ultimate? Yeah. Guess what the ultimate gets? <laughs> Little Crackling Man. Yeah, Crackling Drake. When does Crackling Drake with haste not kill your opponent? Crackling Drake, the rule is, if you've been playing Phoenix, you know this rule. If you haven't been playing Phoenix, but you've heard your friends talk about Phoenix, you know this rule. Crackling Drake is always lethal. Yeah. It's lethal 100% of the time. So, <laughs> crack on Drake, you. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so this is like a Nahiri shell that you don't need to be playing Emrakul because it's likely that if you've ticked up twice with Nahiri and you have at least four mana, when that Crackling Drake hits the field, you're going to probably do more than 15. One time, I let my opponent untap with Crackling Drake. I was probably at, like, 11. Uh, it was a 3-4. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, and, and it didn't seem hard even a little bit. My opponent was like, yeah. all right, and now it's 11. And they killed me. I was like, yeah, oh, jeez. Well, yeah, well, one time I, I was at 19, and I was like, I can't die to this 6-4 <laughs> crackling six, day. Four. And then next thing I know, they're like, manamorphose, manamorphose, surgical mice shit. Yeah. Surgical the other thing. Yeah, because that's giant growth. Bolt you, and I'll 25 you right now. And you're just like, you know what I mean? It's crazy. So, brings in Crackling Dick, which is basically lethal. Um, this is the next version of Phoenix. I'm obviously a believer in whatever Zan does. Um, top forward in IQ. Wasn't particularly close. Zan made that deck better the next day and won an IQ with it. Uh, so, let's just hop into a game, see what happens. I'm ready to have fun with this. Yep, let's do it. And welcome back. Here we are. We won the die roll, like you do. Um, here's what I see in this hand. I really like these hands in Phoenix because there's a lot of potential here. Yep, I love this hand. Um, I would like to find a Faithless thing, so we have the bee's knees. Of course. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll start off with the little Flooded Strand action. Yeah, Flooded Strand, 100%. That way the scar to the bottom stays on the bottom within reason. Um, we're definitely looking for a Faithless looting. But turn two Pyromancer Ascension isn't nothing. So the way that I want to play this one out is like we play the Pyromancer Ascension game and go for the Incidental Phoenix. Yep. And I want to play the Flutter Strand because I want my opt to matter. Yeah. The Scry. I said that. Yeah. It is the wrong opt. Oh, sorry if I'm not the pirate opt. I love the pirate. I told people at all the tournaments I like the pirate one better. I played opt in Death Shadow. And they're like, wow. I always thought that was the worst one. I was like, yeah, but it's got a pirate on it. Okay, I'm going to let the thoughts use resolve. I think that's appropriate. It's pretty clear that they're going to take the Ascension here. If they don't take the Ascension and try to snipe our op, then yeah. they've made a mistake. Then they've probably lost. Right, so it's fine. Unless they have, like, a trophy, but even then, like, they should have, like, I don't know. Yeah, if they take the op. Yeah, so we kind of knew that was going to happen. What land are you going to get? Steam Mints? No, we're playing white. Oh. <laughs> We're going to get ourselves a hollowed boy. He's going to be like, uh, no. That's probably a mistake. He says. Bottom. Easy bottom on a bolt. There's a mountain. Okay, so we've drawn two lands in a row. That's pretty bad. How many lands does deck play? 
Plays 18 still. So we should be good on lands for the rest of the game. Uh, let's just take another draw set, hoping to find our cantrip. I still feel good about this game. Yeah, still feel pretty good. How many axes do we have? Lightning axe? Or we don't have those because we have Phoenix. Nope. Uh, we, have so good. we do have less um, discard outlets, but Lightning Axe can be awkward at times. I hope that it's Goyf and not Ooze. Um, it's time to... Yeah, I would, I would Manamorphose. Make uh, Blue Blue, I think. Uh, you still make Blue Red. Okay. Because if you hit Bolt, then you just want to fire it off. We oh. pass! <laughs> How unlucky! Uh, that was bad. That sucked. Alright, goodbye. We're gonna have to kill him with Phoenixes normally. Um, that feels bad, but we're still just gonna win. Yeah, if you draw a Faithless inning, it'll be brainstorming us, so... It will get rid of two cards, give us two new cards, and hopefully they'll be spells. <sighs> That's really good. Crackles! Zan on the sticks, ripping crackles like it's yesterday. Yeah, I love right. me some crackles. Whoa! I just noticed we have the big CR flag in the background. For those of you who don't know, I'm Costa Rican, so I put this big flag in my house because it reminds me of that home. Nice. I'm not. Zan's not. He has this flag here because I put it there. Ooh, are we going to find a good spot for the flag, or is it going to have to go in my room, do you think? I don't know. We're thinking of moving into a place. It's happening. It's ha Oh, no. It's happening. It's happening. It's not going to never happen. Ooh. What do you want to do here? He's bricked on land, so I just want to get this bob. Does that make sense? Oh, I really just wanted to... Play the Drake, he plays a removal spell, and he draws a fetch land off the bob so the fatal push kills the Drake. I'm not about it, dude. I don't want to grab this bob. I really want to draw the extra card. Okay, but I'm telling you what's going to happen is Bob's going to find him the land, and he's going to Liliana minus us. Or we get to kill him next turn. Our next turn can be better in the sense that he draws a Fatal Push. There's the Fatal Push. Don't hit the land. Any land will do because of Shield of Ruin. Exactly. I mean, he had one draw. He Since he revealed the Fatal Push, he has one draw. Right, but he wouldn't have had it. He would just put it in the Fatal Push. We know he doesn't I have mean, it. I mean, we're in our main phase. If he had it, wouldn't he have played it? Or is he slow rolling? He's literally just like... Mm. He's feeling so good about the land he picked up off his, off his second draw. He's like... Sometimes things just work out, you know? I don't think that's the case. He's probably cursing at his uh, treetop village that he picked up on the second draw. Just like, gosh darn it, any other land. Now he knows he's going to just take these. Oh! Uh, the worst. That doesn't do anything to us right now. Well, it, he could kill our... Uh, he could crack it. And then hit our crackling tree. Oh, yeah. Cool. But then he doesn't draw the card. It's pretty bad. It's true. Um... Next turn, I feel good about 3-2 Haste Flyer. Uh, what if we draw the land? What do we do if we draw the land? No, we should just do a 3-2 Haste Flyer. Yeah, totally. I was saying if we were going to draw the land, then we can play Thing in the Ice and Detention Sphere. We don't want a Detention Sphere, it just gives him Revolt. Do you know what I mean? We would have attacked first, and then done it. Warudem, warudem, dem, dem. So now he's going to uh, kill the crackling Drake. Which is going to be fine because he goes to 11 here. And he has to deal with each of these phoenixes. Phoenix is a really hard card for that deck to be deal with. Okay, you're right. I can't wait to show everybody... Oh, never mind. He got another Fatal Push. Dang, he keeps finding those. But they're starting to get worse and worse. Because he's not killing good creatures anymore. He's just yeah. killing... I once made a tweet about Dark Confidant being a really overrated card in Modern, and it's proving so. Eh, he, the only reason he's in this game is because he's picking up a Fatal Push every turn. I think if he wins this game, it's 100% off the back of the Dark Confidant. I really like Dark Confidant. Yeah. What do you think he's taking here? The Sphere. What if it was the Arc Light Phoenix? Oh, he's going to eat it? He's just dying. Yeah, he's, he's in a really good spot to just be dead next turn. Well, he gets a gain of life. What do we do? You want to go for it? Do we go for it? I don't want to. 
I guess if we brick, we can desphere the phoenix. It would desphere the scoops. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for it. All right, let's try to have fun. All right, we're doing it. Wow, we got there. We got there. <laughs> High five. Good, good games, yeah, everybody. Good <laughs> All right, phoenix is so good. Faithless looting is a busted card in modern. We kept this hand because it had a lot of upside. Getting rid of these guys. It doesn't matter. We have lethal. Hmm. I'm going to metamorphose make. Black green. I'm going to cast the visions first. Ooh. He's dead right now, so none of these decisions matter. Ooh. Play the island blue, red. Black green, black green, black green. For the BM. Blue. No! Green, 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 blue. green. Ugh. Why are we still going? It's fun. This is fun. Uh, oh, we get to see their deck. Oh, I have to go to combat first. Because if he has a surgical... You can surgical. I can surgical. And then he dies because he would take two. Yep. But now we didn't get to surgical. Uh, that's fine. It was better to play around surgical. That makes sense. Yeah. But especially because we know most of the contents of this deck already. So, playing green-black, we won game one, of course, despite having one of the slowest starts. Yep, yep possible in the deck that's because our deck is very powerful phoenix is the best deck in modern currently um and this is kind of why if it gets six turns it just wins close to no matter what close to 100 percent of the time you know it's it's rough uh how do we board against them what are we looking to avoid what are we looking to do the opposite of avoid to and some of our viewers might know what that word is but i don't <laughs> um unavoid i mean surgicals are pretty bad Everything else is pretty solid. They bring in Leyline from time to time, so that can be scary. Um, at this moment, I would probably be watching my opponent board, and if I see them slide in uh, a lot of cards, I'd be like, it's probably bringing in Leyline. Mm -hmm. uh, but we saw Nihil Spellbomb in the main of their deck, so I would assume that they don't. We board out our, our Surgicals. That makes a clear view for Nahiri and Beacon Bolt. Um, but... Other cards that we might consider are a braid, spell pierce, and wear tear. Um, but after looking at this list, I want to keep it as clean as possible. So Nahiri and Beacon Bolt are our only cards that are coming in. I like that a lot. I don't like diluting this deck too much just yeah. to be green black. I think we're going to be green black if we keep our play tight and don't get too cute. Yeah. Uh, we're all top in a game, two or three or one hundred. It doesn't matter. Nahiri actually gets rid of Leyline, which is pretty dope. Whoa, that is cool. Yep, this looks like a good hand in that it has got cards in it, and our deck is very powerful. What do you think he's gonna take? Uh, probably. Metamorphos. Oh, Metamorphos, yeah. This card just looks scary. Look at it. It's two hands. Los manos. Even the other one is los manos, or is that Kissy? I'd like to take this time while he's in because joining us to welcome all of our Ooh. new viewers. We just got a surge in subscribers. Happy to have you aboard. Um, and look forward to us breaking modern every week and people ignoring us until they can't anymore. That's just what's going to happen. Eventually they're going to be like, you know what, guys, I think i got to pay attention to these Lotus Boxers because every time they make a new video, they almost win the tournament the next time. That's true. I can't wait to play this. Are you playing it? At the IQ this weekend? So this weekend, we have a pretty crazy plan for IQs. You'll know about... I don't want to talk because I don't want to spoil it, but if we do it, you'll know about it. It'll be a legend. It'll be awesome. Interesting draw. So this bolt doesn't kill this Tarmogoyf. Famously. Sad. Very sad. I'm just going to play this Hall of Fountain tapped and pass it in. All right chance to get beaten down here it's not very high because this is like a five turn clock usually on our fight thing um so it's just something to keep in mind when you're playing against this deck so we are a little under the gun uh we can get kind of behind the eight ball on removal spells too so that's not great so we're just gonna let this happen but this is the formula if you're green black and you're trying to beat phoenix you want you want to turn on hand source a spell you want that to be Tarmogoyf on the back end, and you take their Lightning Axe, because without that clock, Phoenix is going to kill you. Um, so this is their formula for beating us. What has to happen for them to win is 
Tar like Inquisition, Tarmogoyf. Now we did another hand stretch spell. That's good. Something like a Liliana the Veil would be really good because we couldn't stick a single creature. Does that make sense? Um, and we still haven't found any cantrips, which is surprising. Like a, even a Faithless Sitting would have been great by now. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have to have an answer for things like Pyromancer Ascension. That's going to be your formula if you're playing Green Black. I'm obviously a person who really appreciates Green Black decks. I think they're quite good in Modern right now. Uh, and part of the reason is that you're not completely dead to Phoenix, but you do have a really strict... I call them formulas. Your game plan has to have a certain amount of certain cards, and that requirement is very stringent. Uh, draw D-Sphere. Thing in the Ice is a pretty decent draw, but we're going to go with the Crackles. Or... Crackles. Just try to get out of the situation. They probably have an answer, but making them play that answer is a strong move. Yep. And we get to draw a card, so it replacing itself. Yeah. Very good. Looking for something, if we get like a bunch of spells into a Pyromancer's Ascension, we're in a really good spot. Faithless Sitting. Obviously trying to get our Phoenixes in the graveyard is going to put us in a really good spot. Something like Nahiri to exile a Tarmogoyf is... Uh-oh. So we got, we're getting choked, which yep. means we will be losing these two. That's pretty bad. It's bad, but beatable. I haven't seen choke in a long time. Me neither. Well, hey, choke. I, I think this is totally beatable. So what's interesting is we get to block right now. Yeah. So I guess I, I have a blue source that I don't need. So this should probably get um, red, white, sacred foundry. Okay. All right. We got a game plan. So now we got the base covered. If Tarmogoyf remains a 3-4, well, he knows about bolts, so he's not going to walk in a black bolt. Yeah. Lame. But he may believe that we can't get a red land. Oof. Oof. That sucks. That's just going to happen. But it made his... Tarmogoyf. Four or five, Tarmogoyf. No. Yeah, but we got a block. Yeah, it's time. It is. So we want to wait till after damage, right? The bolt. Yep. So we're going to be going down to four. four. But if you draw a path, that will be good. Lots of draws. Yep. I think this is just playing to win. All right. Give us a shot. Easy bottom. Bottom. And we're back in there. That was awesome. This is fun. Classic Phoenix thing to do is draw a cantrip into the answer. It's like the only thing better than drawing the answer. <laughs> drawing a Faithless Looting in between would have been perfect. Wow. Okay, we'll get to the Faithless Looting then. He's like, all right, well, do I win? And we're like, mm, try again. But also, if you had attacked with Treetop Village, you uh, might have had a better shot. Yeah, we probably would have gone down to one. Been in a bit of a rough, rough spot. We are doing too great on land. There it is. Two turn clock. All right. Where do we go from here? So I guess we're still alive. Uh, we're dead if he has a removal spell. Or a land. Oof. So we're dead. Don't, don't say that. We might live. We might live. But we are dead. Striker Hope, still living. I wanted Emrakul off the top. Get him to lethal. Yeah, because if you draw Faithless, if he if he survives this turn and we draw Faithless Sitting, there's a pretty high chance we can win this. Let's cast the Elder Spell this turn. All right, so what, what do you think our opponent has? Okay. Just, we're, just, we're dead. Yep, we're dead. I would like to see what our next draw stuff was. Oh my god. Don't pay too much attention to that we, stuff. If we survived, we would have won. Alright. Hmm. So let's talk about what we saw from our opponent. We saw Choke. Choke was a big one. Yep. Tarmogoyf was a big one. 
And I still don't believe that we're supposed to bring in wear tire because the choke was pretty. No, the choke isn't really what did it. To be yeah. honest, we were uh, fine. We just yeah. had too many breaks. Exactly, and that doesn't incentivize me to bring in spell pierce either. Um, yeah, I just want to run this one back. We'll be on the play, maybe not get disrupted as much. Yep. Feel good about how that game went, because our opponent had to have a lot of stuff go right for us to lose. Yeah, and I think that we, we, we were the path, we stabilized. If he didn't have the removal spell at the end, then we're right back in it. We were even, like you said, a turn off from just having two Phoenixes, and those two ops are going to get us deeper into cards, so if we find another path, then we're, then we're in a whole other bad, you know, good situation. Well, it was lethal. Like, Faithless Looting into the two Phoenixes and two ops, was just lethal. Because our Drake lives? Uh, mm-hmm. It was all about the Drake living. Drake's like, why you coming over, it's over. <laughs> uh, yeah, and yeah, the choke was detrimental for that to happen. Because let's say the choke wasn't played, um, and, we played and we had access to that mana. We hit the Faithless Suiting, we hit the Ops, and we kill him. Or, that sounds about right. Or we just have the blockers to block. Zan, while you've been talking to me, I've been thinking about Drake. What do you think? Is his career over? Is he washed? Or is he coming out with another hit soon? He's coming out with another hit. He's, he's got a, too many people in the bank. He's a hit maker. 100%. I mean, his dad writes his lyrics. Wow. So, okay. So you know I'm an Action Bronson guy. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Action Bronson or Drake? Come on. Mainstream Drake. Ooh, you're so mainstream. I love Action Bronson. I'm just trying to get Shaquille though. I love that guy. Have you ever seen uh, that show he does? It's got the F word in it. F that's delicious. I watched it with you. Yeah, that makes sense. I remember that. I love that show. Um, they were in Jamaica. They were in Jamaica. Kids, don't watch it. <laughs> Jamaica's crazy. The rest of you guys, go watch that show. Action Bronson is a blast. He looks like a ton of fun to hang out with. Um, and that's just going to be us in a few years. A different show where we go, it's like a documentary, we go and we eat something really nice and we play in a magic tournament. Um, we ask where our friend who's always off doing something weird is and it cuts to... His life. Yeah, like, like they do with uh, Big Body Best sometimes. We're like, where's Body at? And he's like in New York, like trying to, you know, he's lost or whatever. <laughs> who, who is our version of that? Julian. Where's what's J, what's JJ even doing? And it's like him like trying to meet a girl on Tinder. Yeah, you know, it's like really whack. Oh man, fantastic! A lot of stuff has to go right. First, we have to be rich and successful. Second, we've got to patch stuff up with Julian. He's growing a lot, everybody. He's growing. Sorry. So we mulliganed our first hand because they had no lands. That makes sense. Yep, and we're looking at our second land. It's pretty solid. Um, I want to put this Drake on the bottom. Yeah. Even though it's one of our best cards. I think it's the best card later. Right now, yeah. we can do better. We need to be working on crafting this game plan. We're hoping to land this Ascension. I think that involves... What What is our thought process in just putting a island on the bottom? Oh. We're looking for lands anyway. So we but, can do that. Yeah, but these... Yeah, they're not the red lands that we need. Exactly. So goodbye, island. Goodbye, island. I've seen that. Hollow Fountain Goat. Please don't get inside of my hand. Also, what are we casting end of turn? Up. Because we are looking for... If we hit red, we're just straight slamming the Shaquille O'Neal Pyromancer Ascension. Yeah, Pyromancer Ascension is most likely gone. It is gone, but we gotta opt. Alright, what do you got? Why did I yawn so early in the day? We're recording at 2 p.m. right now, everybody. Lies, 8.47 p.m. Wow! Just tell the audience I lied to them after I claimed to be honest earlier in the video. We're going to get a comment on that. They're going to be like, first things first, your audio isn't sound quality perfect. Uh, you guys need to move to L.A., open up a recording studio. That's where I want my Magic the Gathering YouTube videos to come from. Yep. Second thing second. Rap video. What? Nothing. I said the second thing second. We need a rap video. We need a rap video. Oh, well, yeah. Obviously. Just because I'm in it, everyone wants to hear me rap. Oh, we did it. And we got number three if we want it. Uh, Do we want it? Okay. Yeah, we want it because we got a Pyromancer's Ascension. What in the crap did he Inquisition? Oh, he's got another hand disruption spell. He's just hoping we're going to land this line. Okay, so we will keep Thought Scout on top. 
But the land on top of that. Yeah. That makes sense, because then we get to choose what happens to this land. No, no, no. We're going to draw the land first. Fine. Tapped? Yep, tapped. Go. Go. Have fun. I think they're going to take the ascension. That's the only reason that they're No, they really ascension. just didn't think that we were going to draw the land. Okay, yeah, but if you're not making a land, you're either going to hand us over again, or you have the trophy. Or they're going to play... Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant. I told you had another one. I know these green black people and how they think. I'm in their freaking head. Like nicotine. <laughs> I like addressing our kids. Kids, give a comment. Kids are the most interactive. Demographically of all YouTube. So if you're a kid right now, if you're youth of the nation, uh, comment on our video. We want to hear more from you. Uh, what kind of stuff do you want to see? I know what the kids want already. It's flashy, crazy decks. They want five color soul flare next week if you comment. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Please, five color soul flare. That's what kids want. Are you sure? I am. Do you 100%. really know that demographic? One? Yeah, oh, the kids. The kids. I know the kids. Okay, I hope so. They like cream cheese bagels, <laughs> <laughs> and soul flare decks. Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. And we play this land out. Go. I'm just trying to get Shaquille Doe. Action Bronze is one of my favorites. Don't I know it? Don't we? Be, do you think we'd be friends? Me and actually, me and AB. A, that's what we call each other. AB. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Probably. Wow. He's got a big old thing. All right. So this next turn, we're probably going to cast that thought scour first, targeting ourselves. Probably going to high upside to Vanamorphos here if we hit a Phoenix. But it's all about what I want to name. I think I am going to get red white. What are your thoughts on that? Um, we've only cast one spell, two spell, three spell. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because we're not under pressure to cast this up. Red and white. Red, white. Oof, we hit the opt. I said opt. I thought we knew there was an opt. No, we did it. Oh. We knew about the Thought Scar, which we fired off into the Manamorphos. How did I know there was an opt? I don't know, dude. You got abilities. Ooh. I'm an Esper. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so let's get rid of this bolt. Yeah, bolts do nothing. And we'll get rid of this land. And Lands we'll... do nothing. Yep. Goodbye. So, I wanted to play another Goyf and not have a trophy. That's my plan. Do I mean, if he plays choke, we just lose. All our lands are islands. Yep. I'm not worried. We can't choke two games in a row, and the 45th president is on Trump. It's all too unlikely. <laughs> so that's one of my favorite gambler's fallacies, is when you once you introduce outside elements to the gamble mm -hmm. in an attempt to make it less likely, that's one of my favorite fallacies. Okay, so is it D-Sphere for sure, or do you think we can just thing in the ice? Thing in the ice. Thing in the ice is just gonna die. It just dies during Rosewell and puts us behind the eight ball on life a little more. We have more turns to draw stuff if we DC right now, is my thought process. Yep. We're at this point wanting the game to go quite long because we're a little behind and it takes time to catch up. So I'm in for the removal spell. He can't just destroy it in a turn. If he assassin trophies our thing, then there's a chance or assassin trophies our sphere, then there's a chance the thing lives. Um this is my hand. Basically, I use it every day to Write poems to orphans. It's really sad. They're sad poems. <laughs> no, that's not nice. My mom would be so mad at me. Do you think it's Liliana time? It's peanut butter Liliana time. No, it's attack time. Right, why, why did you grab the fetch? Ooh, dial this tracker down. Tracker's not as bad. Pretty bad. So, let's play the thing. Play the thing, leave up opt. I think we cast opt now, because if we hit a land, I would like to play it. 
It's time to opt. Not that one. All right, these are some not so great cards. N not being able to find Phoenix is rough. Assassin's Trophy right on top. Trophy! What are the chances that we're gonna get trophied? I 100% now. Because uh, he's gonna trophy our Badonk and Donk. Wow, at least he doesn't have very many clues. Yeah. This game's not looking so hot. If I were him, I would just. Put those clues in the graveyard and dome us for seven. He did not do that. Uh, he just has better stuff to do. Yep, just basically clearing up things that he can lose to. Um, yeah, so this is probably going to involve us. Okay, in order to win this game, we're going to need to get rid of this ooze which we're going to do at the end of turn and then find another removal spell what is this flood just trying to do for us nothing really yeah so hold on to the flood is trying it's probably going to be a card that we discard so eat something Are you sure it's ooze? Because the tracker represents a lot more damage. Mm, let me out. Let's see what we get. Bottom. And this game is most likely over. It's bought something. Where's Dabs? Yeah, we're just dead. Well, I think the deck's still really good. Uh, this is just one of the ways Green Black can win. Green Black, probably one of our toughest matchups. I think it's great in Modern. Um, you know, if you want to see us do a Green Black, obviously leave a comment. We'll work on it. I have some thoughts on Green Black currently as it stands. I think Kalidus is not very good. Um, and I know what to replace it with, and I won't tell you guys unless you comment on the video. But you already know what it is. Don't tell them. You better not. Yeah. 100%. You're right. Well, it's because it's your idea. <laughs> that was obvious. Uh huh. Our opponent has four clues and 50 mana and an assassin's trophy and cool. You know who really ran away with this game? Dark Confidant. Both times. Nah, it wasn't Dark Confidant. Nah, it wasn't. It was the Double Inquisition. Alright. Good games. Um. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, leave that comment. If you like the video, smash that like button. All that stuff is going to be good for our analytics, helping us grow the channel. Um, we are going to be moving soon, resetting a setup. We're going to have a more regular schedule for everybody watching. Um, so, as always, on Lotus Boxers, big things coming soon. For sure. If there's a member of Lotus Box that you want to see make a video, I can make it happen if you leave that comment. Yeah. Yeah. Please Please talk to us. It would honestly be probably it would take to get maybe someone like Dylan Donegan to make a whole video. One comment. One comment. I mean, I, wouldn't you do it? If we got one comment that was like, I really want to see Dylan play some deck, wouldn't you be like, all right, let's go on. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it really isn't going to take much. Um, right now, you guys are, we are so accessible to you guys. So take advantage of that because when we're, when we sell out and go Hollywood and we're esports gods, we aren't going to give a fuck about you no i'm just kidding oh i cursed we'll edit that out we aren't gonna give anything about you um i'm just kidding you guys are always gonna be your number ones so like comment subscribe um if you're trying to play the next level of a phoenix deck list for you is in the description box down below Hello. and i think we'll just see you next time see you next time Lotus Box, now powered by Cardboard Live, is proud to introduce you to all of its sponsors, Introspective, Red-Handed Art, and MTGO Traders. 
Use the code LotusBoxPayPal to get 8% off singles for orders over $5. And links to all these sponsors are in the description box down below.